So, Selena, what is actually going on in the country as you go across uh, and talk to individuals? What are they actually thinking about everything that's going on right now? Well, what is interesting, and again, people can check out everything I do at SelenaZito.com, but uh, because I have three full-time jobs. <laughs> um, but so <laughs> what? no matter what your political party is, The same concerns are across the board uh, with regular folks. Uh, And what do I mean by regular folks? Uh, Folks that aren't um, involved in politics either for a profession or because they have an illness and they have to watch it all the time. But, you know, people, I mean, (laughs) there isn't a time that I don't pull up to a gas station, which, by the way, is all the time because I'm always on a back road, where you don't hear someone cussed at an inanimate object meaning the gas pump, because, yeah. the you know, the average cost now to fill up an average car is about $100. You know, that takes, that takes a I put, huge I, chunk. I put uh, yeah. three gallons of gas in my car yesterday, three gallons, and it cost me over $18. And That's a, okay. a word that shouldn't follow the word <laughs> holy was uttered at that pump. Uh, but I, I mean, you're, I looked at that and I thought that this is insanity. Insanity. How are people doing it? It is. Well, they aren't. So, it, so what people are doing to sort of fake pretend that they're not getting gouged is that they'll only put 20 gallons, $20 worth in their tank. And, and they're like, well, this is it for the week. And if I can't get where I need to go with yep. 20 gallons, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but it, it, and it's not that they're trying to not face reality. They just they just have to find a way to manage reality, and that's what it what it um, what, what it's come down to. But so the other thing I think is really important for people to understand is the impact of the cost of diesel, because diesel is how we get everything that we want in our hands every day whether it's food, whether it's our order from mm-hmm. Amazon or Rayfair or the, the, um, the fresh vegetables that we want from a farm or any of the energy that we need to, to heat our house or light our home, all come is derived from diesel. So what does that mean? Everything in our lives costs a lot more because diesel, if you think gas is insane in the number, so is diesel. But the other things that the thing that people are really deeply concerned about is crime. Crime in, in the, and in, in not just in New York, not just in Chicago, not just in uh, Washington, D.C. By the way, if you follow the scanners uh, from any of those cities, it's just, it's like a horror movie. But, you know, uh, you know, cities across the country, the crime wave is insane. And a lot of that has to do with two years ago starting to sort of place police officers on a lower tier of importance and significance mm-hmm. in our lives. And, and, and the direct result is that the that, that police are, are literally have their hands tied behind their back in the things that they pursue. And criminals know that. And they literally get away with stealing things right from underneath you, knowing that there are no consequences. And, the, and, the uh, final and, thing, and here's a, a wait, wait. And here's another point on this. There's a story out today. Michigan County limits in-person response to 911 calls after blowing through their gas budget. So now here we are in the middle. Are we even in the middle of uh, uh, of June? And they've already blown through their gas budget. So now don't call the cops because they can't come. That's right. so astounding. Least, it's like Ghostbusters. The streams have crossed. So no, not only can't the police departments yeah. afford the gas, they can't send the, the police out to respond. Uh, you know, and the other thing, and I think we really miss the significance of this, but, the, you know, when people in the news, in particular in the news organizations that don't cover the, the crisis at the border, they think of it as, um, uh, sort of this re- racist reaction to people of different c- colors or different um, p- places of origin coming to their country, and that's why they don't want them crossing illegally. That is not 
Uh, we understand most Americans understand that 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 innate drive to want to be American and be free. However, what is also coming across the border is crime and drugs, fentanyl, meth. And where is fentanyl and meth coming from? It's coming from China, and it goes to South America, and it goes to Mexico, and then it comes not just to um, uh, cities, but it's coming to suburbs. It's not just a white Appalachian problem anymore. The city of Philadelphia, which is majority minority, has the highest rate of overdose deaths due to fentanyl and meth than any other city in the country. That is now just not a white wow. Appalachian problem. That is a problem that is affecting everyone. So let me ask you, when will the, or are they already? I saw some of the poll numbers uh, with 18 to 24 year old adults. He's at, Biden is at 20 percent. Uh, Hispanics, record lows for uh, Democrats. And same with um, blacks. Um when do the American people know that this gas price is not because of Vladimir Putin? It is because of ESG and these energy uh, decisions that the financial sector and the Biden administration and the left have made. When are they going to tie together the food shortages and the diesel shortages and the crime when are they going to say enough is enough of these kinds of crazy policies? Oh, they they already know that. <laughs> the press just doesn't think they know that. That's the funny thing. It's It reminds me so much of 2010 when I was following um, that midterm election um, and, and the Democrats held power and and. John Boehner, God bless him, he said the most simple thing. He said, turned around and said, when someone said, what is uh, this, uh, you know, what, what, are you, what are you Republicans all about? And he just turned around and just sort of flippantly said, where are the jobs? And, and it is as simple as that. You know, there is a midterm election of historic per, um, proportions that happened, I think, I think it's 1892 or 94. I can't remember. I did do a great, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say my story is great. I did a great analysis of that midterm election where Democrats lost 130 seats. 130 seats. So I'm not cow. saying, I'm not, y'all can go check it out at SelenaZito.com. But the similarities between what was happening in America then and what is happening in America now are extraordinarily similar. So I think that all of these charts, all of these guesses, all of these, you know, new, this leans right, this leans left, all of them are not going to capture uh, the amount, the, the, the breadth of the wave that the Democrats are going to feel in November. They're just not. They don't understand. And part of the problem is so, if you... Re- Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Um, I'm on a delay, so please um, just keep going. If you <laughs> try to interrupt, just keep going. Um, the uh, well, finish your thought. Finish your thought. Well, I think the bit largest part of the problem is is that reporters and Democrats and even Republicans don't understand how big this is because oftentimes they're not having conversations with people in real time in their real lives. And people are not always completely honest with a politician or a reporter, uh, especially one that's from New York or D.C., because they don't want their name in print, because they don't want people coming after them on social media. So so they say nothing or the, or or they just shrug. Uh, but if you really know people and understand people, which is w- what I do, not because I'm spectacular, but because I live in the middle of Appalachia, right? People have a sort of sense of trust of someone who shares their values. And and it's going to be mm-hmm. monstrous. Wow. Um, all right, Selena, I, we need to talk again um, probably next week because I, I learned so much from you, and I just love your articles. Um, you're just very insightful, and you you use history to uh, to show the parallels. And I'm going to go back and read that uh, about the election okay. of what was it, 1890? Which I one think was it? Was it? 1894. It was in the, it was Grover Cleveland yeah. Cleveland second term mid that midterm election. 
was it the uh, was it the silver election, the one that was yeah, about yeah. the the, yeah, silver, the... Sil- yes silver was part of that. Yeah. It was eighteen ninety four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was eighteen ninety four. Yeah. That's right because yeah. it was right before the year that William Jennings Bryant ran for president in ninety six. Yep. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Selena. I appreciate it. Uh, you can find all of her work at selenazito.com, selenazito.com. If you really want a handle on what people are actually thinking that you're not seeing in mainstream media, uh, read uh, Selena Zito. 